Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Buck. Um, I, I have uh, ready to go call centers in uh, Fort Montefiore, so we have five call centers. So when people need them ready to go, they don't have to go through the, the setup of the building. We can we rent them out on a seat basis. We also have a construction company as well that uh, builds uh, PPOs and uh, offices throughout the county and uh, the rest of the buildings. So thank you, my guys. So. I'll, I'll ask the first question, sir, sure. before, you know, because every time we do have this real estate summit and events like this, the first question, the most difficult question would be, is there a real estate bubble? Dr. Ong mentioned earlier that it's far, far out there and it's like 10, 20 years from now, that's what he said. Sir. So maybe I could get that difficult question out of the way. So let's, let's uh, get that. Jeremy, would you like to Should I start? Um, no. <laughs> um, Why? <laughs> um, well, certainly Modelo is seeing one of the highest rates of net absorption, the um, additional requirement for space of anywhere in the world. We were trying to we were discussing yesterday which other cities were having such high levels of net absorption. It was, was, there are only two or three others that we could think of. So, and that is underpinned by strong fundamentals, which I think many of us have already mentioned, and um, not only in BPO, but as uh, the Philippines and the Manila economy develop more along the lines of a service-based economy. Um, the other side to that is that Manila, despite complaints, is also amongst the, the most affordable uh, market in the world. Um, if you look at the late, league table, it's it's a, a major um, cities. It's amongst the lowest. So, a lots of scope for um, for further growth um, without with, and still being competitive. And I guess as, as I was saying earlier on the supply side. Uh, some of the supply not necessarily seeing a bubble anytime soon, but certainly there are some uh, some things to take a look at and to be careful of as we grow uh, in, in this uh, industry. As far as the uh, the Filipino people, they they have the the, uh, the right voice and they have the empathy. I think from a from a call center perspective, but uh, certainly we've seen the labor uh, costs go up over the last ten years, which makes it uh, yeah, it, which which starts to be something we should take a look at, as well as things like. Uh, the cost of electricity. So when electricity is, is uh, among the highest in the world in the Philippines, it starts to push our prices up. So certainly our voice stuff will probably be able to keep, but we were looking at what Dr. Ong was saying with, with uh, Vietnam getting close to that 100 million mark, then we need to also be careful that we still lose some of the, the, the non-voice, the KPO kind of things outside of there. So, but certainly I think we've got another, another long period of time of successful growth, but uh, also to be careful. Can I answer that also? Well, I think, uh, you know, when we say real estate, uh, there's a bubble. I think we, we really need to dissect real estate per sector. So perhaps when we talk about commercial office, when we talk about retail space, when we talk about the past real zone, no doubt about it that the, the demand for those sectors are, are, are very strong. But perhaps uh, the area of concern perhaps could be uh, residential sector. Uh, just look at a certain magnitude. I'm not saying that bu uh, bubbles are, are bad. What makes bubbles bad is when they burst. So what is really important is how you manage the bubble. You can shrink it, you can expand it. But let me just give you some interesting magnitude perhaps. I have done this study together with uh, some industry representatives of the, the sector like uh, Shedda. One of them is here, Paul. And we discovered that, yes, it's true that the backlog has grown actually. We're talking about the backlog of 5.9 million. But of that uh, 5.9 million, we're not yet taking into account the, the 300,000 we can afford. If you have to really study it very carefully, that 5.9 million backlog is actually in the lower sectors of the economy. We're talking about economic, socialized, and low-cost housing. That backlog is actually there, but most of the production, uh, a significant portion of production, is uh, about 40%. It's really on the 
area where there's a surplus already. That's where you talk about middle class and upper class housing. So if you, you see it like that, uh, you will see that if you're producing, let's say on the average, 200,000 units every year, and 60% of that, let's say, goes to, to the middle class, to the lower segment of the housing, it will not really be enough. So based on the estimates, uh, in 2030, we're looking at at least 8 million backlog. But that's a very interesting phenomenon because you have here on one side uh, a housing boom and on another side a looming housing crisis. It's a very interesting situation that I think uh, many of us would have to consider. Although it's an important consideration that I think uh, development economists will have to consider, but we also have to take into account that while we talk about backlogs, we talk about affordability and we talk about decision of market players to where they put their production. So at the moment, most of the productions is where margins are very attractive. So perhaps we may have to take this into consideration. But of course, uh, from the way that the economy is growing at the moment, we may not have to really worry so much about poverty. But we do have to be concerned about this, uh, this looming housing crisis.